Well, grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. Come on in. Let's go into the presence of the Lord. I'm excited about today. I'm excited about this worship. I'm excited about what the Lord is going to do and how he's going to move today. And I'm glad that you are joining us. Come on in to Crown Ministries, the Royal Worship Center, where everybody is somebody, but God is all. I want to invite you into this worship experience today. God is going to move by his spirit, and right there where you are, you're going to feel and sense the presence of the Lord. Do me a favor. Like, love, and share. Like, love, and share, and you certainly can put comments right there. We want to hear how the service is blessing you. We want to hear how you are receiving something from this encounter and this experience today. I'm excited about being with you. I'm excited that you've allowed us into your home or uh, wherever you are to view this broadcast and to listen to this audio. Thank you so much for joining us today. Come on, like, love, and share. I want to see those hearts. I want to see those thumbs up. I want to see those comments. As you are viewing this broadcast here at Crown Ministries, we are emphatic and excited that you have decided to join us today. And we want to make sure that you experience a royal worship experience. Now, I know we've been in our homes for the last couple of weeks, in our living rooms, in our bedrooms. Wherever you're be, uh, listening to the broadcast, you've been in your house. And we are excited that you're committed to watching us and being with us during this time. But I want to remind you what the word of God says. The Bible says, I was glad when they said it to me, let's go into the house of the Lord. But then the scripture says, in the presence of the Lord, there is the fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. I'm here to tell you that in his presence, your joy is full. At his right hand, your pleasures are forever. They are eternal. They will not waste away. But guess what? The presence of the Lord is not just in the church. I think by now we've all realized that you can get the presence of the Lord and be in the presence of the Lord outside of the four walls of the sanctuary and the church house. But you can experience the presence of the Lord right there where you are in your living room, your bedroom, right there where you are listening to this broadcast. The presence of the Lord can meet you. Now, how does that happen? It's very clear. The Bible says that he inhabits the praises of Israel. He inhabits the praises of his very own people. So when you praise God, he shows up right where you are. If you're in despair, if you're in trouble, if you're going through a trial or tribulation right now, if you would just praise him, he shows up right where you are. If you just adore him, he shows up right where you are. I know. Money is funny. Change is strange. I know people are not as committed and consistent as you would like them to be. Relationships are shaky and rocky. I get it. But he inhabits the praises of his people. He takes up residence. He literally dwells in your hallelujah. He lives in your glory to God. God is right there in your thank you, Jesus. The old folks used to say it like this. The more I praise him, the better I feel. So today I admonish you to give him praise, lift him up, magnify him, worship him in the beauty of holiness, and he's going to meet you right where you are, right there in your house, right there in your living room, right there in your bedroom. The presence of God is going to meet you there. I want you to join me in prayer because we're about to go into worship and we're about to experience God. Our worship team is prepared. They're ready to lead you into the presence of God. And today we got a very, very special uh, gift for you. Uh, none other than our very own Pastor Tay is going to be bringing the word of God. And today we are also going to be celebrating our graduates. That's right. It's graduation Sunday here at Crown Ministries. They don't have opportunity to have a normal graduation ceremony that some of us have had in the past. But we want to celebrate them. We want to highlight them. And we want to give special gifts to all of our graduates that are graduating here at Crown Ministry. So we got a lot in store. I'm ready for worship. I'm ready to get into the presence of the Lord. And I want you to join me. Come on, we're going to pray. We're going to invoke the presence of God right there where we are. And then we're going to go right into our worship. Are you ready? Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you. We glorify you. Almighty great God that you are. We lift you up. And we give you praise today. This is the day that you made. You've invited us into your day. And we're 
gladly. So now, God, we invoke you. We pray that you would move by your spirit. Somebody listening to this broadcast needs help. They need deliverance. They're crying out. They're reaching out to you. And God, your ear is not heavy that you cannot hear. Your arms are not sh too short that you cannot reach. So I pray that you would hear and answer. That you would reach those individuals who are reaching out to you. I pray, God, that you would meet that woman. Meet that man right there in their homes. Meet them at their predicament. Meet them at their situation and deliver them out. Wipe the tears from their eyes. Calm their fears. Soothe their heart. Oh God, we invoke your presence. We invoke your presence right here, right now. Show up in a mighty way. Show up in a big way. Show up and show out. Throw your weight around. Throw your weight around till the devil is intimidated. Throw your weight around until demons are cast out and imps and devils have got to flee from the very presence of our homes, our minds, our bodies, and our children. Somebody's mind needs to be regulated. They're dealing with anxieties and fears. But oh, great Father, we know that you're able to deliver us from all of our fears. Father, somebody, their body is dealing with sickness and disease. But Father, you can heal them. Matter of fact, they're already healed by the stripes of Jesus Christ. So we pray healing. We pray deliverance. We pray breakthrough. Oh, God, show up now. Show up as we worship you. Show up as we lift hands before you. Show up as we open up our mouth. Show up as we declare your praises. Show up. Show up today. Show, don't deny us of your presence. Don't deny us of your embrace. Show up. And we shall give your name praise and glory and honor in Jesus' mighty, matchless, and marvelous name we pray. Amen and amen. My God, I pray you're blessed today. I pray you feel him already moving and stirring up. I pray that the presence of the Lord is meeting you right there where you are. So come on, let's go into worship together. Our praise team is going to lead us into worship. And we'll be back with the word of the Lord by Pastor Tay and take you further into this worship experience. Come on, let's go. Let's praise him together.
Praise the Lord, everyone. This is Pastor Tay, and I am so excited to be bringing the Word of God on this Sunday morning. I just want to thank God so much for my parents and my pastors, Dr. Jonathan Shaw and Pastor Sabrina Shaw, for availing me this privilege. I just believe that each and every one of you have been uh, tuned in, whether it's through our Facebook Live, whether it's through our podcast or our YouTube channel for such a time as this. The word that I have to preach today, I'm excited about it. And I am definitely ready to eat from what God is going to give us on this Sunday morning. Are you ready? I hope so. Let's turn our Bibles to 1 Samuel chapter 30. I'm going to be reading verse is 1 through 8 and 18 through 19 from the New King James Version. Again, 1 Samuel chapter 30 verses 1 through 8 and 18 through 19 in the New King James Version. And it reads like this. Now it happened when David and his men came to Ziglag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziglag, attacked Ziglag and burned it with fire and had taken captive the women and those who were there from small to great. They did not kill anyone, but carried them away and went their way. So David and his men came to the city and there it was burned with fire and their wives, their sons, and their daughters had been taken captive. Then David and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives, Ahinoam, the Jezreelitess, and Abigail, the widow of Nabal, the Carmelite, had been taken captive. Now David was greatly distressed for the people spoke of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and his daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord, his God. Then David said to Abiathar the priest, Ahimelech's son, please bring the ephod here to me. And Abiathar brought the ephod to David. So David inquired of the Lord saying, shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, pursue, for you shall surely overtake them and without fail, good God all day, recover all. Jump down to verse 18. So David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away. And David rescued his two wives and nothing of theirs was lacking, either great, excuse me, either small or great, sons or daughters, spoil or anything which they had taken from them. David recovered all. I just want to lift up for emphasis verse eight in our hearing. So David inquired of the Lord saying, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them and without fail recover all. For the next couple of moments, I want to preach to you this thought, fail proof. Come on, you can drop that in the comments, fail proof. Philbrew, Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you so much for uh, the word that you have given me to preach to your people today. I thank you for both previous and spontaneous revelation. Have your way in the next couple of moments that we are together and preach me, Jesus, that somebody can get strategy, insight, foresight, confirmation. It's in the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Failproof. Our 
our uh, bishop has been talking to us on the topic of leadership lately. And I thought that it would be um, amazing if I just stayed in that flow and just kind of let you into my personal development. I've been recently reading a book by John Maxwell on the 21 irrefutable laws of leadership. And although this won't be a book review, I really thought that uh, a lot of what he gives in the first couple of chapters of his book will give us the foundation for our conversation on today. John Maxwell talks about leadership and he says the true measure of leadership is influence. It takes leaders to raise up other leaders. And he says this, to add growth, lead followers. To multiply growth, lead leaders. To be a leader, especially in 2020, in this day and age, you have to have people that intentionally listen to your voice, are drawn to you, and that will, are willing to act upon your vision. Leaders can create positive or negative change, and in order to move people in the direction of your vision, you need influence. So you may be asking, Pastor Tate, can you define influence? Can you give me some understanding as to what influence entails? And I want to let you know that I can. Uh, uh, influence is the capacity to have an effect on the character, the development, or the behavior of others. Let me say that one more time. Influence is the capacity to have an effect on the character, the development, or the behavior of others. So if true, uh, if the true measure of leadership is influencing others, then the goal is to not only raise up leaders, but to raise up leaders that can also be influential. You see, uh, as we come swiftly to our text, John Maxwell identifies seven keys of leadership. Those of you that are taking notes, I need you to drop it uh, in, in, in the comments. The first key is character or who you are. You see, true leadership begins from who you really are. Character and integrity goes hand in hand. Crown Ministries, Crown Church of Charlotte, you know our bishop teaches us that integrity is doing the right thing when you could do the wrong thing and get away with it. So character is the first key of identifying a leader. Relationships is key number two or who you know. We know that our world is derived around relationships. Uh, and if you are a leader who has followers, your, your leadership is strengthened by the relationships that you have. And I would even kind of press into that a little bit more and say not only is your leadership strengthened by the relationships that you have, but your leadership is strengthened by having the right people around you that can help you reach your goal. The third key is knowledge or what you know. Leaders have knowledge, they understand their surroundings, and they have a vision for the future. The fourth key is intuition or what you discern. Leadership requires time. You guys know this. It requires a lot of energy. It requires having integrity and morale, and it also requires discerning momentum. The fifth key of leadership is experience or where you've been. You see, although experience does not guarantee credibility, if you're able to have experience as a leader, it confirms that you're not a novice and it gives you a chance to uh, uh, showcase your leadership potentials to those that are following you. The sixth key is past success. You see, uh, oftentimes, especially in this day and age, your resume or your street cred is extremely important and success leaves clues. So your past success uh, to those that are following you uh, can be a determining factor for future victories. If you've succeeded in the past, it gives us a key uh, to know that we can also experience victory by being under your leadership. And the seventh and the final key that we're going to discuss today is ability or what you can do. 
So we talked about character. We talked about relationships, about knowledge, about having intuition, about experience and past successes. But ability is what you can do. And I believe that those six keys are really important. But this seventh key allows us to know that if you no longer continue to lead us in an area of victory, then we can stop listening to you and we can stop following following you, but all leaders have an ability to lead a team to victory. I'm not going to keep following you. I'm not going to listen to you. I'm not going to submit to you if you don't know where you're going. So ability is what you can do. And there are so many people in our world that's asking for leadership. That's that's actually petitioning and trying to scout others to be their leader. But the question that we need to ask, especially during this this pandemic is what can you do? So uh, thinking about John Maxwell's book on 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership, uh, let me now lay the backdrop to this story in 1 Samuel chapter 30. It actually begins in chapter 22 uh, um, by a man named David. I know that you're pretty familiar with this character in the Bible, but just in case you've never heard of him, uh, let me introduce you to David. Uh, David was a shepherd boy. It says that he was the least in his father's house. His father didn't really acknowledge him as being a son. You can find that around First Samuel chapter 16. His brothers hated on him. And there's so many theologians that really talk about that family dynamic. But just for our conversation, we can know that David was the black sheep of the family. He was the outcast. He was the least likely in his household to be deemed the leader. But how many of you know that when others count you out, God God count you in. I see there's a meme and there, there's a, 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 a phrase that's going around social media that those that counted you out can't count. And I want to let somebody know that you may have been counted out. You may feel like you're the black sheep of the family. You may feel that your friends, that your family members, that your parents even don't see the true value of who you are. But I want to let you know that God is actually counting on you and he's counted you in. You see, David was the least likely of his family to be a leader, but God chose him for such a time as this. He sent the prophet by the name of Samuel to anoint him as the next king of Israel. There's somebody under the sound of my voice. Somebody may be catching the replay and you are feeling insecure. You are questioning yourself. And I, I've come with this encouraging word. I've come to preach a word of victory to let you know that you are the one in your family. I know others look the part. I know others have gone to school and they may have the credentials. I know others may have have the money. I know it's easy for you to look around and point to see who's next, but you are the one that God has chosen. You are the one that he has stamped his seal of approval on. You are the one that has the oil. And when God has chosen you, there is nobody that can change his mind. David was the one that had potential. He was a worshiper. The Bible tells us that he played the harp, that he sang songs, that he was also a servant, not only only did he worship, but he served. He was faithful to his father's commands. He kept all of the sheep in line. He wasn't saying to himself, well, I got the anointing, uh, so I don't have to worry about these stinking sheep. Uh, the Lord called me to be next, uh, so I don't have to worry about these minuscule tasks. May I give a word of encouragement to somebody who's waiting? You've gotten a prophetic word. You've, uh, you've known that God has called you from the time you were young, uh, but it seems that you're doing stinky jobs. It seems that you're handling minuscule tasks. It seems that people still have not recognized or even agreed with who God has called you to be and what he has called you to do. My word of encouragement to you, my brother and my sister, is just to wait just a little while longer because the Lord is about to breathe on you. Your name is going to be in the wind. There are going to be people that are going to flock to you when it's time because when the Lord is ready to reveal you, when the Lord is ready to bring back the cover and manifest every gift that he's placed on the inside of you, it will be undeniable that you are God's choice. 
So we see here in 1 Samuel chapter 20, 22 uh, that it says uh, in a very uh, uh, ironic way, David is running for his life. Uh, uh, I fast forwarded in the story just a little bit. Um, he was serving the king uh, and then the king realized that he was next. Uh, so he got a little bit jealous and envious of David. Uh, so David is in a hot pursuit uh, to flee for his life. Uh, and he knows that his leader, the king of Israel by the name of Saul, is chasing him and we find him in chapter 22 in a cave we find him in the cave called Adullam running for his life fleeing for his life probably praying to God to make a way out of no way but something amazing happens it says while he was in a cave when his brothers and his father's house knew that he was in the cave called Adullam. Watch this. It says everyone in distress, everyone that was in debt, and everyone that was discontented gathered to him. Everyone that was distressed. Distress means you have anxiety, sorrow, or pain. Everybody that was in debt, I'm talking about you owe the creditors, they're coming to catch you. And everybody that was discontented, everybody that was dissatisfied with their life, everybody that was restless or they were craving a, a life of more gathered to him. Now, this does not really look like the makeup of a leadership team. It seems ironic when, when we're praying to God and you know that you're next and you know that God has called you to do something that you don't have a model for. You're the first of your kind. You're the first in your family. You are the trendsetter. You are the paradigm leader. You don't have a modern day example that looks like what God told you. You might be praying for a leadership team that is secure that has a million dollars uh, and that has joy unspeakable and full of glory. Uh, but that's not what David had. His leadership team was made up of those uh, that were in debt, distressed, uh, uh, and, and the Bible says discontented. Uh, and it says they gathered to him in this cave and he became the captain over them. Now that's powerful to me uh, because again, I told you leadership is all about influence and influence is bestowed upon you. Uh, I believe that these people, although they were not living uh, at their highest potential, uh, although they, they were not living uh, at their maximum uh, capabilities, they saw something in David uh, and peradventure may I add, I believe that David saw something in them. Uh, you see, it is the makeup of a leader uh, that can take raw material and after fashioning and forming them can make a follower a leader. It's only a leader that can pull out of you what is actually on the inside of you. It's only a leader that can see you being further off than you currently are and speak and lead you to the place that they saw. So David becomes a leader of 400 men in a cave. As our story progresses and we move closer to 1 Samuel chapter 30, we see that he started off leading 400 and now he's leading 600. His leadership has grown. Word has gotten out. He has no throne. He has no money. He doesn't even have a house to live in. These men are following him. They're following their leader Everywhere that he goes, everywhere he looks up, it says David and his 400 men, David and his 600 men, David and his mighty men. They're taking territory. They're fighting the enemy. They're, they're gaining ground for God's glory. And then all of a sudden you see David in his leadership grow in his posture. He starts to negotiate some real estate and he says, listen, he says to he says uh, uh, to one of the leaders, he says, listen, I've been serving you uh, for a long time. Uh, and he says, and uh, I really need a home. I need a city uh, for my community. Uh, I need a city for the people that are following me. Uh, and then it says, uh, uh, why don't you take Ziglag? 
Ziglag was a city that was given to David and his men. Watch this. And then David gets married. He has two wives. His entire team of 600 men that are following him, they get married and they have sons and they have daughters. And it almost seems like a utopic experience because when I came to this man, I was broke, busted, and disgusted. But under his leadership, I now have property. Under his tutelage, I now have a family. It seems that life is amazing and it's glorious. These men go out and they come in. They have wives, they have children, they have cattle. And how many of you have felt the same way that you associated yourself with a leader on earth? And when you they met you, you were living beneath the level that you know God called you to. You were living subpar, you were living average, you were living mediocre. Let's bring it a little bit closer to home. Come on, Crown. Crown Ministries and Crown Church of Charlotte. When we met Bishop and Pastor, many of us were insecure. We were broke, busted, and disgusted. We were dealing with insecurities. We had frailties. We had trust issues. But under their leadership and through this connection, many of us are owning our own homes. We're driving our own cars. We've established families. It seems that life was great. And we started start heralding to the world, my leader is the greatest leader. They can lead you from potential to manifesting your reality. They can lead you from having a dream to actualizing it. The men spoke well of David. Their families loved him until we get to 1 Samuel chapter 30. It says that they went out to fight the enemy. And when David and his 600 men came back. Our text today opens and it gives us to know that there was destruction that happened in Ziglag. Watch this. It says, now it happened when David and his men came to Ziglag, when they came back home, the Amalekites or the enemy, watch this, they invaded Ziglag, they burned the city with fire, and they took captive their women and their children. Let's paint the scene. Let's imagine this. When they get back home from war, they're thinking that they're going to take a bubble bath, that they're going to be reunited with their family, that they're going to have a hot meal to eat. And they come back and they see dis destruction. Their city is not only destroyed, it is set on fire. Not only is their city destroyed and set on fire, their families are gone. They're taken captive. The women, their partners, their children that represents their longevity is all taken captive by the enemy. And it says that when David and the people saw this, they lifted up their voices and they wept until they had no more power to weep. Now, this is a powerful scene because these are men of war. You know David. David has not only killed bears and lions, but he's killed Goliath without a sword and without military uniform. David is the leader, and he has built 600 men to move like he moves. These are men of war. These are men that are powerful. These are men that are violent. These are protectors. These are defenders. They're not novice. They're not passive. These are men that are strengthened. And it says that they wept and they lifted up their voices until they had no more power to weep. I don't know who I'm preaching to on this morning, but I want to let you know in your leadership, whether you're of the single leader or you're a part of a leadership team, that the enemy is going to try and hit you in a weak spot to take your breath away. Way. The enemy is going to try when you're when you're trying to take more territory. He's going to try and affect your family. He's going to try and hit your home with a blow that tries to knock the wind out of you. And you may be weeping right now. Tears while I'm preaching may be falling down your face and you're weeping until you have no more power to weep. There's trouble that has hit your home. There's situations that have hit your finances. There's a storm that has hit your marriage. A relationship between you and your children are broken and you're looking for reconciliation.
reconciliation. And it says, watch this, that as they were weeping until they had no more power to weep, that the leadership team started to turn on the leader. Oh my goodness. May I encourage you, brothers and sisters, in the moment of your weakness, in the moment when you're going through your trial, in the moment when you're going through situation, don't turn on the leader. It says that David heard, he got wind that the people spake of stoning him. It says, but he encouraged himself or he strengthened himself in the Lord, his God. There are a couple of notes that I want to share with you. It says that as a leader, David had to rely on the relationship that he had with God before he became a leader. Let me just give you this note. Let me just give you this parenthesis. Don't allow your leadership and your, your many abilities and oversight to keep you from your relationship with God. Sometimes God will allow things to happen in our life that will bring us to our knees only so that we can look up to the hills from which cometh our help. I want to encourage somebody on this Sunday morning. Leaders, don't allow your adversity to make you forget your memory. Don't allow what you're going through to block your mind of the God that you serve. Although you're in a new situation, although you're in a place that you've never been before, like David, I'm sure he had to encourage him himself in the Lord by reminding himself of the God that brought him through, of, the, of reminding him of, of the God that brought him through insecurity, that brought him through situations when Jesse was treating him bad. I, I'm sure he had to put himself in remembrance and remember the God that kept him when he was fighting that bear and that lion. David had to remind himself that the God that allowed him to defeat Goliath is the same God that is present today. See, when you remember everything that God has done, it gives you resilience to know that he, if he did it before, he can do it again. When you remember God's track record, it gives you posture in prayer to say, God, you're not a man that you should lie. Neither are you the son of man that you should repent. So David's confidence started to increase. He began to move from fear to faith and he went into prayer and this is where we're going to end our conversation today. He asked God two questions. He said, God, shall I pursue? Shall I pursue? The second question that he asked God is, shall I overtake them. If you feel like your back is up against the wall, if you feel that the people that could help won't help, if you feel that you're between a rock and a hard place, and there's some things that have been stolen from you, some things that have been taken from you, some things that you're rightfully owed that are in the possession of the enemy, I double dog dare you to pray and ask God, shall I pursue and shall I overtake? It's amazing when I define this. Basically, David was asking God, do I have your permission to attack? And if I attack, will I succeed? The only thing I need to know is if God has given me a green light to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the enemy. You see, oftentimes when things happen, especially amongst the leadership team, we have friendly fire. But let's remember, believers, we only have one enemy. The people think they, they thought of stoning their leader because they were mad at David, but they don't remember the past victories. They don't remember that because of him, they have real estate. Because of their connection to him, they actually have a family. And they started to question the ability of their leader when they were in a rock and a hard place. Leaders, leaders, lean into the screen. It's time for us to pray and get the blueprint from heaven. It's time for us to pray and get the mandate from God. David said, God, shall I pursue and shall I overtake? And the last thing that I want to leave with you today is God says, pursue and overtake. 
for without fail, you're going to recover all. I've just come to preach to somebody for about 60 more seconds to let you know that it's recovery season. Recovery is your portion. A restitution is coming to you. Everything that was stolen, everything that was lost, everything that was repossessed, everything that is held up captive, it's time for you to square your shoulders because it's time to overtake and pursue. I dare you to get your strength back, to get enough energy to go into the enemy's camp and get everything that belongs to you. I want to encourage you that we're moving into recovery season. You cried. You wept. You were dismayed. You questioned your ability. You were sad. You may have even been depressed, but the season is changing. It's recovery time. I want to encourage you. I want to tell you, my brother and my sister, get ready to recover all. Nothing lacking, nothing missing, nothing broken. Get ready to recover. Get ready for full restitution. David, when he got out of prayer, God told him, it's time to recover all. That's all he needed to know. He squared his shoulders and he started moving. His men, although they were disappointed, they still followed him and on the way they found favor. May I just give you this insert that God is going to give you favor on your season and your road to recovery. They found a young man that had fallen sick three days prior that was a part of the enemy's camp. And when David found him, he refreshed him. He gave him bread and he gave him water. And then he said, who are you and what are you doing here? And the young man told David everything that he needed to know. He said, my master actually left me because I fell sick, but we invaded this city, burned it with fire, and took everything, both woman, child, and livestock captive. David said, can you lead me to where the spoil is? Can you lead me to where they are, where the Amalekites are? He said, as long as you promise not to turn me over to my master, and as long as you promise not to kill me, I'll show you where they are. May the Lord give you favor that there's somebody in this earth that knows how to locate your stuff. There's somebody in this world that knows exactly where your possessions are. They know where your children are. They know where your money is. They know how to take you and lead you to the root. And when David got there, he saw to his surprise that his children and the children children and wives of his leadership team were not harmed. His wives were safe. His cattle was safe. And it says from twilight until the evening of the, of the next day that David and his men, they fought the Amalekite until everything moving and shaking was destroyed. And without fail, David recovered all. Verse 18 and 19 gives us to know that everything that was that, that was stolen, David got it back. So before I end, I want to encourage somebody to go get your stuff. God has given us a promise on this Sunday morning that without fail, you won't lose this time. You won't be ashamed. You won't be disappointed. You won't be embarrassed. Without fail, you're going to recover all. You won't have any defects. There won't be any hiccups in this plan. It's not that you're going to go get your stuff and you're going to be stopped. Without fail fail. The plan is fail proof. I want to let you know your business is fail proof. Your marriage is fail proof. Your relationship with your family is fail proof. And without fail, you're going to recover all. You're going to recover all. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent. It's time to enter recovery season. It's time to enter recovery season. I need you to get this in your spirit. I'm at my time, but it's time for us to enter into recovery season. Everything that was stolen, everything that was taken captive, not only was it preserved by the time David got there, he was able to avenge himself on the enemy. 
get everything that was rightfully his and for his leadership team. And without fail, they recovered all. Nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing fractured, nothing damaged. Somebody under the sound of my voice, you need your joy back. You need your strength back. You've been searching for your peace. It feels like peace has been stolen from you. You haven't laughed in a long time. You're feeling dissatisfied within. And you've been blaming your leader. You've been blaming those connected to you. You've been weeping. You've been crying. You've been journaling. You've been mourning. Asking God, when is breakthrough going to come? And I want to let you know that it's here. It's not time for us to be disconnected. We have to stay connected because we have one enemy. The enemy has your stuff. But God has given us the green light today. Pursue. Overtake. And without fail, recover all. It's recovery season. And without fail, no hiccups, no bumps in the road, no boundaries, no stumbling blocks. You're going to get back everything that the enemy stole. I hear even the scripture resonating in me. God says, I'll restore the years that the canker worm, the palmer worm, the caterpillar and the locust has eaten up. I don't care if you feel like you've lost time. If too much time has elapsed. If you are not even interested in praying about it any longer because it's been so much time since you've been separated from your thing. A promise is a promise. And without fail... You're going to recover all. I pray this message blessed you. I pray that it encouraged you. For some, it may be a strategy. For others, it may be a word of encouragement or confirmation. Wherever you may find yourself in this message, know that without fail, God is giving you the green light today to recover all. There may be somebody under the sound of my voice that you're looking to get your life back to get your breath back. It feels like you've been living and it seems like you've been trying to just keep your breath. There's so many things happening, so many situations one after another and you've questioned those that are connected to you and, and you've questioned the leadership. And for some of you, you have even cut ties with the wrong people that you were following. Today, I wanna introduce you to the ultimate leader. His name is Jesus. He came to this earth to teach us a better way, to teach us how to have life and to have it more abundantly. I want to introduce you to Jesus on this Sunday. For those of you that say, I need to, true leadership. I need to be saved. I need, I need someone that is going to walk with me and talk with me and show me who to connect with and show me how to recover everything that I lost. The ultimate thing that we need is eternal life. That was stolen from us. But I'm so happy that on Calvary's cross, Jesus whipped the enemy. <laughs> and he actually got back the keys of death, hell, and the grave. And all you have to do is confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead and you shall be saved. So if that's you, my brother and my sister, this is the first time that you're confessing Jesus as Lord of your life. Or even if you're a backslider, you once walked with the Lord and he was your leader, but you switched sides. Life got in the way. You know, you took a pause from your relationship with him. He says, I'm married to the backslider. You can come back to me. I'll receive you as my own and I will help free you. I'll help liberate you. You were a captive, but without fail. Not only can you can recover all things, but you can recover your life back. If that's you, I want you to say this simple prayer with me. Believe it in your heart and confess it with your, with your mouth. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess you as being Lord of my life. I need you as my leader. Guide me. Direct me. Help me. Give me new cravings. Give me a new appetite. I don't belong to myself. I don't belong to this world, but I belong to you. I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead. And I know that I'm saved. It's in Jesus name that I pray. Amen. My brother and my sister, that prayer 
just secure your salvation. Jesus is the ultimate leader. Now, this is what I want you to do for me. We want to continue to help you on this journey. This was the best decision that you can ever make in your life. But we want to help you in the steps ahead. Would you do me a favor and text the word SAVED, S-A-V-E-D, to the number 40691. It should be right there on your screen. Text SAVED to 40691. All we're going to do is ask you for some contact information and we want to connect with you. We want to pray with you. We want to get to know you a little bit closer so that we can help you follow the leader. I hope that you were blessed today. Before I turn it back over to our bishop, I just want to pray out, Father, we thank you for what our eyes have seen, what our ears have heard, what our hearts have received. Oh God, I thank you for your word that without fail, we're going to recover all. We honor you, we glorify you, and we thank you, oh God, for the reconciliation, for the restitution, and the recovery that is about to hit our lives. Bless everyone that accepted you as Lord of their life, and we honor you and we thank you for this worship experience. It's in the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. I love you so much. It was a pleasure to bring forth the word of God to you today. I love you so much. We'll see you soon. Wow, what a word. What a word from the Lord. Thank you, Pastor Tay. Were you blessed by that word? Were you moved by that word? I'm here to tell you, listen, God is moving by his spirit. He's doing something magnificent, marvelous. He's doing something mighty in your life. And he's making your life fail proof. Wow. Fail proof. You're fail proof. Your finances, your business, your ministry, your body, everything is fail proof. And without fail, you shall recover. I want to challenge you today. I want to challenge you to sow into this word. This word blessed you. Uh, Crowd Partners, you know what we do. We sow our tithe and we sow our offering. And I want you to sow into this word as well. Today, let's get ready to give. Let's get ready to sow. The Bible says that God loves a cheerful giver. When you say that God loves a cheerful giver, the reality is cheerfulness is not something that you have in your pocket. But cheerfulness is actually something that you have in your heart. So when you say God loves a cheerful giver, he loves when you give from your heart. So brothers and sisters today, don't just give from your pocket, but give from your heart. Your heart will tell your pocket what you should give. If you listen to your heart today, sow from your heart, and I believe that the Lord is going to bless you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and even running over. God's going to cause men to give into your bosom. He's going to bless some 30, some 60, and some 100 fold. How can you give here, Crown Ministry? We have several ways. You can go to our website, www.crown-ministries.org and click on the giving tab on our website. It's right there on the screen. You'll be able to give there. Or you can text to give. Simply text CMI to the number 28950. Simply text CMI to the number 28950. You can text it, give it, that's it. It's that simple. And we thank you for your generosity, your kindness. We know that our tithe is 10% of our income. Our offering is based upon the goodness of the Lord as what we offer to him. Uh, our sacrifice, our praise, our offering, our goods, our treasures, we offer it to him. But also you can go even further and give a sacrifice unto the Lord today. Just from that word, a fail-proof sacrifice. Fail-proof sacrifice. So that today, commit that today. I want to challenge every person who would do it today to go beyond your regular tithe and offering and submit a seed of $50. That's it, just $50. Because you're sowing a fail-proof seed, a seed that will not fail. It will go into the ground. It will die, but it will bring forth a great harvest. It's going to bring forth a great future, the one that you've been praying for, the ones you've been looking for. I want to pray over your seed. Father, I pray that that man, that woman who has sowed today, out of their own need, somebody have sacrificed. The tithers, the seed sowers, the offering givers, and the sacrifice makers. Father, I pray a special anointing upon them, a fail-proof anointing. I pray, Father, that you begin to cause the anointing of recovery to hit their house. Let it hit their bank account. Let it hit their pocketbook. Let it hit their children. Let it hit their business. The anointing of recovery, everything they've lost, this year, years past, may it be restored back to them 30, 60, and even 100 fold. We believe it by faith that it is so done now in Jesus' mighty and marvelous name. My God, 
Did that word bless you today? Come on. We got to experience God in a mighty, magnificent, and marvelous way. And I'm excited for what he's going to do. Now, prepare your hearts and minds. We're getting ready to celebrate our graduates. Watch this. Grace and peace, everyone. Pastor Sabrina Shaw and Bishop Designate here. And we want to take a moment to recognize our scholars, the students that have graduated a part of Crown Ministries 2020. And yeah. we are so excited for them. They work so hard. And we understand that through this pandemic, they haven't been able to walk across the stage, um, but they're special to us, and we want them to know that they are special. I know their schools may be doing something, but we wanted to do something because we wanted them to know that we are proud of you. Yeah. So at this time, Bishop Desenek and I, we're going to share with you the names of our graduates that are stepping up to another grade. Yeah, we're excited about each of you, and Crown Ministries is going to release a special scholarship to each of these children who are going to the next level. We are so appreciative that you stuck through it in school. You did what you had to do. Even towards the end of this school year, you had to do online school and all the things that were not conventional, but you stuck to it. And we're proud of you. We're excited. You hear Crown Ministries, we love education. We promote education. And so we want to acknowledge you and we want to gift you with the scholarship. So let's get ready. Here are our graduates. First and foremost, graduating from kindergarten, we have Imani Charles. Let's give it up for Imani, everybody. Congratulations, Imani. And second, Imani. graduating from kindergarten is Zayden Holder. Zayden! Yeah, thank you, Zayden. Congratulations. Our kindergarten graduates will both be receiving a $25 scholarship each. Come on, thank you, Crown Ministries. $25 each for our kindergarten graduates. Next. Next, we have graduating from the fifth grade is Jeremiah Thomas. Come Congratulations, on, Jeremiah. Congratulations, Jeremiah, for graduating from the fifth grade. You are receiving a $50 scholarship. Congratulations. Y'all give it up for Jeremiah. Next, we have going to high school. Uh -oh. Our very own Kamora Corley. Come on, give it up for Kamora, everybody. Kamora's graduating. And not only Kamora, but also going to high school. We have none other than Jaden Blasier. Come on, give it up Come for Jaden, everybody. And both of these will be receiving each a $100 scholarship from Crown Ministries. Come on, give it up for our graduates, everybody. Now, listen, y'all. I am, listen, I'm super duper excited about these next two that are graduates of high school. Oh, my God. Yeah. Came to us as young babies, but now okay. are graduates in high school. So I thank God for none other than our very own Talaysia Jones! Talaysia! Oh, if she came to us as a little baby. That's, that's our crown baby. Our crown baby. Lord help us. <laughs> Who else graduated? Jamal Cummings! Jamal! Y'all give it up for Jamal. He is graduating oh, it, from it. high school, man. This quiet guy. You know he's cool because cool guys are always quiet. Jamal is a quiet guy, but he's cool. We congratulate you, Jamal. Congratulations. And both of our high school graduates will be receiving a scholarship of $250 each. Come on, give it up. Wow. Crown Ministries, you did amazing. You, you did a did wonderful amazing. job. Thank you for being considerate and giving scholarship to all of our graduates. And congratulations to all of our graduates. Congratulations to each and every one of you. You worked hard. You persevered with all that you had to do on um, being on your laptops and doing Zooms for the first time. But you did it. And you accomplished this wonderful feat. 
and we are just extremely ecstatic and so proud of you. And Crown Ministries, thank you so much again for your gift, for your sewing to make all of these scholarships possible. Yes, thank you so very much. We appreciate you uh, for all that you did and congratulations again to our graduates. Well, this Sunday morning worship has been phenomenal. Pastor Tay blessed us with the word. The praise team blesses in song. We have been blessed entirely today. We've gifted our graduates. And I appreciate each and every one of you for joining us here on this live today to worship with us. Remember to like, love, and share this broadcast so that we can continue to feed you with the word of God right here. Crown Ministries, the place where everybody is somebody, but God is all. We want to pray you out and give you the, Lord, the Lord's benediction. Now unto him that's able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Let us all say amen. 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 God bless you. We'll see you all next week Take to care. worship with Crown Ministries. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye.